guys, so far we are interested in some variables, specifically specific volume. If you are calculating maybe, I don't know, changes on volume of gas, liquids, you have your pure substance here and then it evaporates, you want to calculate the specific volume of that mixture. And maybe you're also interested in the specific enthalpy because you know later we're going to be using the first law, which implies the use of either enthalpy or internal energy. So you want to check that as well for a pure substance. And later on, especially in the second law, you want to calculate the change in entropy. So these are very common uh, variables that we are going to be interested in the study of pure substances and especially to calculate work, uh, heat, how much temperature is going to change, how much uh, work is needed to move that or to change pressures or volumes, etc. And the thing here is that you will be working with a lot of temperature and pressure, so therefore you will need a specific temperature and pressure when working with that. If I tell you I have water at 1 pascal and 5 celsius, well, you want to know uh, first of all, is it really water? Is it ice? Is it steam? You don't know. Uh, how much is the specific volume of that? You don't know. Uh, calculate the enthalpy needed to heat that to 10 Celsius. Well, you will have to know what state is that and calculate the specific enthalpy, etc. So the thing here is that we are interested in many different states. For example, you might be interested in saturated ice or you may be interested in saturated liquid or even in the, va in the vapor not only that, you could be interested in, I don't know uh, properties in 80 celsius degree of water at one atmosphere which is pretty common, if, especially if you are, I don't know, maybe you are calculating the heat required to boil water or to increase water temperature from 25 celsius to 80 celsius or if you're working with, I don't know, maybe a, a turbine, you're interested at how much is this change on a specific volume at, let's say, 700 Celsius. At maybe because they use a compressor, you have 2 megapascals. And all that set of data, you're going to be interested either in superheated vapors, saturated vapor liquid mixtures, or subcooled liquid, or even solid ice, etc you're going to be interested on that. So, before going uh, or advancing, I just wanted to tell you that this is why we analyze phases, to know which kind of phase we are analyzing and working with. If you're working with the superheated vapor, well, you know that it's uh, very high on temperature. If you're working with a subcool uh, sub liquid, probably you know that at different pressures and at different temperatures you're going to have that subcooled liquid so that's why we saw that and that's why we're analyzing a little bit on that on this here to apply them in the first law which will be very interesting in the, ne in the next block and in the second law which is the entropy concept so where do we get those data? Uh, short answer you get them from vapor tables but imagine you do not have that vapor table if I wanted to be a super mean teacher, I will tell you, well, go and do it yourself experimentally. I will tell you, for example, if you're interested in a specific volume of saturated water. So I tell you, I want to know the specific volume for the next cases. Temperature ranges from almost 0 Celsius to the maximum, which is 374 Celsius. You know, this is the critical point. You cannot have water at higher temperatures, so that's why I'm really telling you I want water in all the cases, saturated water. Not only that, do this for every interval of 5 Celsius, so you will see 0 0.01, 5 Celsius, 10 Celsius, 15 Celsius, 20 Celsius, until you get to 370, and to the end, which is 374. So literally you will do one, ex one experiment, two experiments, three experiments, four experiments, a lot of experiments. And of course, you're going to change the pressure of that. Now, mm, why not, since you're already doing this exercise, well, you could calculate the amount of heat or internal energy required if you're using a closed system and the enthalpy, which is for the open system. 
So now, once again, not only calculate the specific volume, but calculate internal energy and enthalpy. And if you're already doing that, why not do that as well for entropy? Now that was on the saturated water. You know that an example is water at one atmosphere, you will have 100 Celsius degree. But of course, if you have different pressure, you will have, you will have different temperature of saturation. But that's only one thing. Imagine if we wanted to know the specific volume of that vapor at one atmosphere and 100 Celsius. You know that you can have water at this pressure and this temperature and it will be a low volume, I don't know. I'm just giving you an example, one cubic meter for that amount of substance. But then you do this and you check out that for the same temperature and the same pressure, if you vaporize that, you will have a 2000 cubic meter sample. Same amount of mass, different volumes, just because you evaporated that amount. So you will need to boil all the extra examples or experiments you did. Let's do every five Celsius, not only calculate the internal energy and enthalpy and entropy and specific volume, but do it for saturated vapor as well. Okay, you did that, you are pretty exhausted and you, got, you will have a lot of data. But why not if we are already studying wider vapor? And this is a very huge, uh, let's say, work. Why not you extend your experiment to a superheated vapor? What does that mean? Essentially, you are one atmosphere and you already calculated 100 Celsius for a saturated liquid, which is water, saturated water and saturated vapor. Why not? In, uh, you're already in vapor, why not add 105 Celsius and get the enthalpy change, the change in a specific volume, you know that since you have this, you have this pressure is constant, volume will not be constant because, okay, amount of substance is the same, you have the same sample, R is a constant, but you're increasing 5 Celsius degrees. So if you increase 5 Celsius degrees, then you're going to increase uh, the volume. So do that as well, let's be honest, you will need that to start at 50 Celsius, and why not do it until 1,300 Celsius in 50 Celsius interval? Okay, you do that experiment and you will, will be working not only with one atmosphere, but work with many pressures because you never know when it's handy. If you are using a compressor and you're working with, I don't know, maybe 50 megapascal, well, we want to have that data. So once again, you do that and you are exhausted because that will be literally a lot of data. And now, of course, if we use superheated vapor, why not liquid water or cool water? Let's say one atmosphere, 25 Celsius. Well, that's water and actually it's cool or subcool water. Repeat the experiment and you know you have from 0 Celsius to 380 Celsius as well, 74 technically and do it in 20 Celsius intervals. Repeat for a huge amount of pressures, uh, 2 megapascals, 10 megapascals, until you get to 50 megapascals. You got a perfect amount of data and technically you will, you will be able to, of course, you have the pressure, temperature, diagram. You will have data from solid, you will have data from solid liquid and you will have data from liquid gas, this liquid gas and this is solid. You will have this data, you will have this data which is the the one we we're talking about. The one we were talking about in the previous video is this data and the one that we were talking saturated water and saturated vapor are here. So you got a, a lot of data and I could be mean enough to tell you that get that subcooled ice data which will be uh, if we wanted to st still speak about that will be the, the subcool ice data, will be this data here. The saturated ice with water, that will be here, and saturated ice with vapor. But uh, I really don't want to be that mean. Actually, we aren't going to be using that much this data. Liquid equilibrium with uh, vapor and vapor data is good enough. So technically, these are okay. You don't need to get this data. Actually, we're going to see that later, you will find it in the internet and a lot of databases. Someone already 
did it, uh, did it for us. Because you imagine if you need to do this for every substance, because we are talking about uh, water vapor. But if we are working with refri uh, refrigerant, or maybe we're working with CO2, or maybe you're working with, I don't know, maybe uh, ammonia gas, who knows? You will need to do this a lot of times, and you will take a lot of time to do each one of the experiments, report the data, and do the, uh, let's say, the whole scientific paper. Uh, the good thing is that somebody already do that, uh, that guy, scientist, or technician, whoever he is, report that data into the scientific community, and we got it for free, guys. So, we're going to be able to get a lot of data on vapor, and this data is uh, in tables, we call them vapor tables. The most common ones are the saturated liquid, liquid vapor and the superheated uh, vapor ones. Probably you're asking yourself where do we get the subcool liquid ones or the saturated liquid ones when freezing. So that will be what I'm telling you. We have a lot of data on this. This is liquid, this is the gas, this is the solid. We have a lot of data on this line. We got a lot of data on the superheated line. And you're wondering maybe where do you get subcool liquid? So this data, where do we get it? Or where is the saturated liquid? is here or where is the subcool liquid once again yeah maybe the subcool ice you wonder where do we got this area well the truth is we won't be using a lot of this if you want to calculate where the subcool liquid we get you will be using a rule of thumb which I will tell you later but uh, essentially just be sure guys that this is the important one and this is the important one, the gas and liquid gas line. And you may even use the liquid gas line to suppose some properties on the liquid. And that's everything on the introduction for vapor tables, guys. Sorry about giving you a lot of information, but you need it for the understanding on why vapor tables are awesome. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, plays, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.